Well, good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? No? Louder? Okay. Sorry. I'm not sure. Green light's on. Okay. So it's 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll get started here. My name's Gerald De La Fuente. I'm a grad student. I work uh, in Thomas Luberstedt's lab. Uh, I hear we have some people from out of town, so welcome to Ames. Welcome to Iowa State. We're glad to have you here. I think we have some people from Arkansas, I heard. Who's, here we go. Yeah, we got quite a trip here. It's great to have you guys here. So uh, first of all, I'd like to go ahead and thank uh, Pioneer and the Department of Agronomy for funding this event. It's great to get so many people together here and discuss uh, some pretty interesting topics. We have a great lineup of speakers. We're really excited to get started here. Uh, but first of all, I want to have our grad students that ran this whole thing. If you guys will stand up, we need to give these guys a round of applause because they organized it all. So I won't take uh, any more of your time, and I'll hand it over to our department head, Dr. Kendall Lamke, to say a few words here. Well, thank you, Gerald. It's, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody here. It's quite a crowd. And welcome you to this beautiful building, this Alumni Center, something else. And so if you get a chance to wander around, it's kind of got some ISU paraphernalia sitting around it in various places that you won't normally see. So I'd like to thank, I too like to thank the plant breeding students because they've done a wonderful job. You know, I was eating a dinner with Jonathan Lynch last night and he was complimenting the students and how professional they've been and that's awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. And so I'd also like to thank Pioneer for the wonderful partnership they've had with us and, and, and others actually in preparing these sorts of symposiums and they've um, and they've been going really well. We've been working, of course, with Pioneer for years. I just want to say a few comments about plant breeding. So some, some of you think I used to be a plant breeder, and that's probably true, because um, yeah, I haven't done much of that lately. But, you know, there's been a lot of changes in plant breeding in ISU. In 2013 and 14 have, have been some pretty good years, I think. And, and, they, and it always centers around people for me, and so I don't know where he is, but you know, Jin Ming Yu started in January of 2013, and that was a big addition. Jessica Barb started, I saw her somewhere, she started in um, January of this year, uh, and that's been a, and, you know, she brings other crops and backgrounds to us, like sunflowers and so on, that's awesome. Danny Singh started in April as our new soybean breeder, I don't think Danny's able to be here today. Artie Singh started in October another plant breeder. And the other thing that we're pretty proud of too is I think Maria Salas will be on the program later today, but she got an NSF Career Award last year. And that's, that's really a big thing too, one of the first ones we've had like that in, in the College of Ag for a while. Then the plant breeding group successfully launched a distance MS and uh, plant breeding program as well, and that's gone, I think, going really, really well too. It's turned into a bit of work, but it's going really well. Walter Souza is leading the Gates Grant to develop, this, or develop educational modules for Africa with the plant breeding group, so there's a lot going on. And I saw my friends from Iowa Corn here this morning, and, and the other big thing is you know, Pat Snobble was named the Iowa Corn Promotion Board Endowed Chair for Genetics um, this year, earlier this year. And that's really big too, I think, and, and part of the focus there, and if you get a chance to run into Rodney Williamson or, or David Ertle, is to work on um, phenomics. And uh, then Pat was recently named director of Plant Sciences Institute, where I think he'll continue that focus on phenomics as well. So this whole conference today um, is, is really, really, I think, appropriate and timely. And I'm, I'm really happy that the students uh, have organized it. So I, I must say once again that, you know, we have outstanding students. And, and I think, you know, we always sometimes forget that. We want to focus on research, but really Iowa State and all the universities many of you are from are educational institutions first and foremost. That's why land grants were created, and so we always have to keep that in mind. And in the end, it's really about students. So I'd also like to thank the speakers um, for coming and taking time. I'm really glad that the weather turned out the way it did today, because if it had been last week, it might, might not have worked out so well for the students or the speakers. So anyway, but thank you to everybody for coming. And so, Gerald, I'll turn it over to you. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Lamke. So before we get started with our uh, official lineup of speakers, we'll have uh, from DuPont Pioneer, our sponsor, uh, Dr. Tabaré Abadi. He's going to come and talk a little bit about this symposium series that they sponsor and their goals for it.
Gracias. I can do it with you. Good morning, uh, buen dia, bon dia para todos. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for, for coming here. I, I really want to thank uh, um, the students that organized this and um, the department for supporting this event. What I want to do now is to kind of link this event with some of the other activities that we are trying to put together uh, as DuPont Pioneer around the world to, you know, in a way to contribute to what we think is a new vision that is emerging around plant breeding uh, around the world. And um, uh, I would like to talk uh, especially, you know, about plant breeding education and what, what means uh, to educate for the next generation of plant breeders. And, uh, and I would like to touch a few a few points here. One is the point of increased complexity. Another one is what, what are the consequences for plant breeding about globalization? And then, how, and, and then the last one is how, how important uh, people are in, in all this. And in a way, I mean, it's very much on the same line on, on, on what uh, Kendall said uh, before. So I am not going to go into the details of this uh, diagram here, but this is, this is a description in a way of the predictive platform that, that uh, Pioneer uses for, uh, for applying genomic selection in, 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 in mainly in maize, right? But I think that, you know, what I want to point, and, and, and you know, I mean, the major component is, you know, how, how do we actually balance, you know, the, uh, predict, our predictive capacity to improve our phenotyping capacity? And, uh, when I look at this, I mean, I, I always think about what I call the Napoleon effect, right? I mean, Napoleon used to put all his forces on the weakest part, on, uh, you know, on, on the, of the enemy lines. And for us, uh, our, the, still the weakest part is the phenotyping. So all this progress in enabling technology and model development and genotyping and double haploids, has enabled us to actually move resources from one part of our operations to another. And that part are the phenotyping components, okay? So I think it's very, it's very much aligned to the topic of this uh, symposium today. But the point of this around education is that, you know, to actually be able to do that, we have had to, you know, to bring together a lot of enabling technologies and a lot of complexity to actually make a lot of changes on our breeding operations. So uh, breeding has become, you know, when I was a breeder in the 80s in Uruguay, in Estanzuela, I was a wheat breeder. I mean, I worked alone, right? I mean, I did my things alone. I walked my plots alone. It was, it was my breeding program, and nobody had to know anything about what I was doing until I released my varieties. That was the reality. Now, that does not happen, right? I mean, we, the breeders never work alone, right? And the traditional description of breeding has really changed. A lot of people contribute to breeding are along, along the process. So things have really changed, and there is a lot more complexity, and, and that's very important to actually think about what are we going to do about this in terms of education for the future. Another, another major component that has changed is, is how global things are. Right, I mean, with internet and with the possibility of moving things around the world, moving technology around the world and moving knowledge has become a lot easier than what it used to be in the past, right? I mean, things can be transferred and, and moved around very, very easily. And, and uh, another thing that happens is uh, around the world, there is an eagerness and a necessity to actually access to some of that technology. And so uh, that, that is putting a lot of pressure in the system because, you know, we really have to generate systems that could be applied in, in a very global, global way. And, of course, from the personal point of view, that also generates the complexity that we need to adapt to different legal systems around the world, to different cultures, to different languages, and 
So things have really changed from what they were, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, right? And so we really need to think, and how do we incorporate this into our educational plans and into the future? And, and then all these things come back into what really matters on this and what really is the real important thing for in, into the future are the people, right? I mean, how do we put together teams and how do we work around people so that they are prepared to, to work together and to face these challenges that we have in plant breeding? And, and for me, having been a breeder, not in the 30s, but yes, in the 80s, uh, my feeling is that the definition of plant, breed, plant breeder has really changed. And there are a lot more people that contribute to plant breeding, breeding than just those that are responsible to handling the plots on the field. Okay? So I think that that is very important when we educate the next generation of plant breeders. We really have to empower everybody that is part of the, of the plant breeding process, I would say, to, to feel that they really belong to that process and that they are, you know, that they have ownerships on the benefits that are being generated on, in, in that process. I think that, you know, that's kind of an interesting concept that sometimes, you know, more traditional breeds have a little, a little bit of a difficult time understanding, right? And, and uh, it took me some time to understand it too. But, you know, I, I am completely convinced about this. And so going back into education, this is a diagram of the disciplines that, according to the uh, uh, Delphi study from the University of California in Davis, uh, are necessary for, for plant breeding. And, and uh, the ones in, 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 in blue were added by Neil Hausman when we had the, the, the first symposium in, in Davis, because you know, he thought that you know, apart from all the other ones that traditional plant breeders have included here, you know, plant physiology and agronomy and horticulture were also important uh, components in, into this uh, diagram. The important thing is the Delphi study makes it very clear that the academic system is very, very robust. The, the North America academic system is very, very robust in, in, in satisfying the needs for most of these disciplines in, in, in general. However, there are, other there are other components that are necessary and have been identified by that study that are very important for, for the future generation of plant breeders and, and even, I would say, for the present generation of plant breeders. And these are, you know, mainly human, um, human capacity uh, 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 kind of skills, you know, risk management, uh, team, teamwork uh, capacity, communication skills, uh, etc. And um, so there is a major concern in the community of plant breeding, uh, you know, and, and that has been expressed, you know, for example, by the National Association of Plant Breeders on what are we going to do as a community to actually help the system, you know, prepare the next generation of plant breeders to actually be, you know, very well prepared in, those, in these other areas too. So, given that, what what are we trying to do about it? I think that you know, the important thing is everybody has to try to do something about, about this, and uh, we are trying to do things as a national association of plant breeders, uh, but as in, in, case of, in the case of DuPont Pioneer, what, what are we doing to contribute to, you know, to, to education? And, and you know, I mean, and just some of the things that we are doing, and a little bit of propaganda here, what we are doing, right? I mean, we have fellowships and scholarships, and, Everybody has that, okay? I mean, there are, there are actually a lot of fellowships and scholarships are around there. We, we also support uh, some uh, chairs uh, around, uh, around the world, and, and we have one here in, on Jamming here in, 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 in Iowa State. We also have uh, DuPont Young Professors Grants, and uh, we are honored today to have at least a couple of our, of our uh, DuPont Young professors in, 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 the, in, you know, in presence here. We have an internship program, and, 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 and I think that you know, this, is, this, is, this is something that the private sector has been making a lot of emphasis of, on actually trying to offer opportunities for um, experiential learning outside the universities that would complement 
the activities that are happening in the departments and we have had a lot of re good reception on departments in you know in, in trying to coordinate activities around these internships and, and you know there are internships for grads and undergrads and there's a lot of flexibility and actually there are a lot of programs uh, from, from, from other companies too. So th a lot of emphasis has been put on that. Another, another component of support that we are, you know, that has traditionally happened is, you know, in-kind research, you know, trying to support certain projects that are of mutual interest and things like that. But I think that the one that I would like to pay more attention is, is are the plant breeding symposia. And, uh, you know, and, and, and because we think that the plant breeding symposia, what, what what we are trying to do is we are trying to target directly the students so that the students, uh, you know, are empowered to actually exercise some of those additional skills that normally the departments don't explicitly offer, although I think that they do implicitly offer, but don't explicitly offer, and, and so that they can actually, you know, feel empowered and actually see which are the capacities that they have to bring into the plant breeding arena into the future. And so what, what are these plant breeding symposia? And um, first of all, they are student organized, okay? Yes, they have the blessing of the departments, but they have to be organized by students, okay? And when we, when we approach a group of students, uh, you know, we really emphasize that you have to do it on your own. So it will be a learning experience. You will learn how to manage things. It's a hands-on experience on learning how to, how to network and how to work around things. The other thing is, it is mainly an educational uh, experience, right? I mean, we, we en encourage students, when, it, when it's done, to actually reflect on what they learn from, from this process, and also to share those learnings with other groups around, around the world. And uh, this series started in 2008 at the University of Minnesota, and then, you know, it, we, we kept doing for this uh, for a few years in the University of Minnesota. It went very well, and we said, well, let's begin expanding this, right? And so we went to Madison and, uh, in 2011, and then in 2012, we added Cornell, uh, Davis, and, 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 and Lincoln. Last year, we, I, we added uh, Oenheim in, in Germany and, and Bisosa. And this year, you know, we'll, well, we have all, all these events all around the world, right? I mean, we are adding... Uh, this event, which is, you know, the starting season for the symposia, and we are very, very happy to have ISU. I mean, obviously, it's very important for us to, to have ISU in, into this. It has a very important meaning for DuPont Pioneer because of the links between ISU and, and, and DuPont Pioneer. But we are also having events in India, in China, and in South Africa uh, this year. And, you know, and this little point in Europe is is probably we are negotiating r right now to incorporate uh, bargaining and also in, into, into this network. So, I mean, it's, we are kind of expanding this and taking this opportunity and opportunity of networking and, and uh, I think that it brings a lot of opportunities. I'm not going to get into uh, a lot more things. And another important thing, all these events are free, okay? So we really want them to take them out from, you know, that arena, I mean, it's really free, and we encourage everybody to have webinars or, or webcasts if, uh, if they cannot be webinared uh, around the world. So this is kind of, you know, I think, you know, like our special event, and we are, we are, we are trying to, to, to improve it uh, as, as, as we go on uh, uh, on this. So I think that this is more or less what I, what I wanted to say. I really want to thank again everybody for organizing this. I think this topic, the topic that was being selected is, is, is a very, very relevant topic and uh, it really complements with the other symposia of the series and uh, I really encourage you to actually look online uh, for the connections with the other symposia. I, I know that uh, when you actually link on this symposia, of this symposium, you will be able to find all the other events that are coming along uh, in the year. And, um, and thank you very much. Gracias to everybody.